Hey, what's going on, everybody? Max here with Because Bitcoin. And today for 10 Minutes Max, we are going to be talking about what happened this morning with the US CPI print, both headline and core, what that means for legacy, also what that means for crypto. Before we get into the charts, if you could do me a solid, please like and subscribe. That would be absolutely fantastic. And again, just a quick reminder, these are 10 minute videos that we do every single day. We usually go over 10 minutes. We try to stick to 10 minutes where we deliver you all of your alpha in under 10 minutes. First so, things first, this is the S&P 500, all right? Um, you guys, most of you know what this is. Just think of this as when people just reference generally the stock market, they're typically just referencing this. This is uh, basically your basket of the the best, the biggest and the best companies in, in the stock market. Um, and this is where most people uh, store, store their wealth and retirement accounts, okay? So, what happened this morning, guys? We did have a, a CPI print. Obviously, like a lot of this turbulence last year, just to provide a little bit of context if you're newer, um, a lot of this, this big drawdown that we had last year um, actually came about because of elevated CPI. Uh, basically, I mean, you remember, right? We you know had elevated inflation last year in a, in a very like simple general sense. Um, and then the Fed had to step in and hike interest rates and, and do a whole bunch of stuff to intervene so that we didn't have runaway hyperinflation like a lot of these countries in, in South America. So this morning, we'll look at this one first. And we're just going to do this real quick because again, we only have 10 minutes. We can't do too deep of a dive. The forecasted CPI, uh, this is headlined for year over year was 3.4%. It actually came in at 3.5. So a very slight miss, but not too bad, right? Like really, really not not too terrible. Um, core came in a little bit hot as well. Now core, and the, here's the definition below, the, the core consumer price index CPI measures the change in the price of goods and services, excluding food and energy. So it's just a modified way to look at um, CPI uh, and usually, you know, core is more important. People take into consideration what happens with core a little bit more than headline again, but we don't have time to dive into all the intricacies because this is only a 10 minute video. But what I want to talk about here is <clears throat> where the markets are going, right? Like that's what you want to know. You're tuning in to go, all right, that's great. Thanks for sharing the, uh, you know, those, those numbers. I don't know what it means necessarily. Some of you do. Um, but where are the markets going to go? All right. So Here's the thing. We're going to look at it and I'm going to present you with some evidence as to why I still believe, even though there's some local volatility, we are still poised for months of upside. OK, and all of this is just sort of local volatility and there's a lot of fear mongering. And let's talk about it. So this here is from uh, this is a public website. If you just go to Google and you type in uh, Fed watch tool. Um, it'll basically take you to a website. It's the top link and it will show you a probabilities table. Um, there's also a bunch of other free data there and it will show you how the market is currently pricing in interest rate decisions. You know, obviously one of the main drivers, if not <laughs> almost one of the sole drivers uh, in recent years of the direction of the, the equity markets has been, you know, Fed interest rate decisions. So, um, obviously, those decisions are based on economic data, but let's take a look at where we're at right now. So, you know, interest rates have been paused. And actually, let me put this up at the bottom. Um, Fed funds. So let's put this up here. So this is when, when people say like interest rate hikes or, you know, cuts, this is what they're referring to is the effective federal funds rate. OK, so right now. You can see we are paused. This is moving completely sideways. Now, hang with me. I know talking macro is not super fun. We're going to try to keep it super surface level and then get into the price action. But I have to set the stage as always. All right. So right now we're at between 525 and 550 basis points. Okay. So just at a decimal point, 5.25 to 5.5 is our target effective federal funds rate. And you can see here based on this line, and, and I'll actually just make it red so it sticks out a little bit more. You can see that we've been moving sideways. Like we have been paused, you know, since all the way back here in, in summer. Okay. So right now there's the next Fed, uh, the next uh, FOMC meeting where they decide, you know, whether they're going to hike or cut or, or keep interest rate pause um, is May 1st. Then the next one is June 12th and then July 31st. Okay. So there's a 99.4% chance that we're going to remain paused through May 1st meeting. Okay. 
And then June 12th, there's a, you know, we'll round up 69.6 or 70% chance that we will remain paused through the June meeting. Okay. And then there's a 50% chance right here, 49.6, that we're going to re remain paused through the July 31st meeting. Okay. And then September 18th, there's a 45.7% chance um, that we are going to remain. Uh, well, actually, 45.7% chance that they're actually going to give us a 25 basis point or, you know, 0.25% interest rate cut. Okay. Um, now, now that we've set the stage, let, let's talk about this because I understand, you know, a lot of people are looking at this and they're like, oh my gosh, like that was it. Like that's the top, you know, we're, we're going to go down and there's like, everybody's taking the opportunity this morning to go to, to Twitter and, you know, proclaim that, you know, they're a macro expert and, you know, we're doomed because of this. So let's, let's just do a little bit, let's just do a quick little like case study on, you know, what typically happens to the market, um, you know, during the, these fed cycles, right. These cuts and these, um, and here actually, let me, let's do this SPX. All right. We need a little bit more data. That's good. Perfect. So let's do a little bit of a case study as to what typically happens um what typically happens during these fed cycles all right now i know i spent a little bit of time actually having to set the stage but i want to give everybody you know a little bit of context so if we're not expecting a cut until september potentially september so this is our first pause all right we're going to put the pause we'll just leave it like this in black okay that's fine the pause is right here, and then potentially the first cut is right here, all right? And then we're going to go back and, and look at historical pauses and cuts, all right? So here was a pause, and then we did have our first cut here, and then there's kind of like a second batch of emergency cuts because of COVID, all right? Let's keep going back here. Pause, and then cut. And this was a little like choppy right here, right? Obviously, like, I don't know, we could probably call this. I mean, there were, this was weird, right? This, this was weird. There were little deviations and stuff, um, but they didn't really start cutting until like over here, right? This is a very long period of time. So let, let's go through and look at them, right? Again, we're trying to do this quickly here. Um, Fed basically right here. This was more or less like a pause. It was slight deviations, but you can see what happened when they just kind of held interest rates around current levels. The markets rallied, right? And then they start cutting interest rates right here. S&P 500 drops, okay? Now let's keep on moving here. They pause interest rates here. And this is before the, uh, the housing crisis, 2008, great financial crisis. They pause. Markets continue to rally. They begin to cut. And look what happens. So again, right here, they pause, markets rally, they begin to cut. We actually rally into the first cut and then emergency cuts and we drop aggressively. Where are we at right now? We are paused and we have real-time probabilities that we are not supposed to not forecasting any cuts until September. So again, we should, based on historical trends, you know, have at least until the first cut before things get really bad. And actually, typically... Markets can can actually rally into the first cut. All right. So, you know, what does this mean exactly for for crypto? Well, there is a very you know direct correlation between you know equity performance now that crypto and Bitcoin specifically have become more integrated into you know traditional finance. Um, you know, stock market it's it's going to be very rare. You know, in, unless it hasn't happened yet, right? Where the S and P 500 is going to like collapse or, you know, pull back and, you know, Bitcoin's just going to just go on its merry way. Right. I mean, we don't have a ton of, a ton of history here because obviously crypto is, is still very new, um, you know, but, but here's, here's Bitcoin, right. And we'll move this up a little bit here. Move to existing pain above. All right, so here is Bitcoin below the S&P 500, and I'll make this orange just so it's very clear to see. And then the effective federal funds rate below. You can see that, you know, typically 
when you know bitcoin dips stocks are dipping as well again right here during COVID, you know we were pulling back for bitcoin stocks were pulling back markets were rallying we had a bull market for crypto again and then starting you know right here you know stocks top crypto tops both kind of go down together you know that they are very much so correlated right so if we are expecting you know at least a, a more trend continuation through um you know, through September, you know, based on the most recent, um, you know, the most recent probabilities, it's, um, you know, here's the thing, like it, it is somewhat likely that, you know, we could just kind of continue on, um, you know, kind of just continue on our way, uh, basically until at least September. So it's April 10th. So you have April, May, June, July, August, September, five, six months. You know, again, unless this time is different or we're presented with new information, we are are simply looking at the data and, you know, the data is telling us that, and look at these charts. I mean, they, they do move and they have historically moved, um, you know, kind of in tandem, right? And, and crypto is still very young. So you have to recognize that, you know, we can't go all the way back to the, you know, the 90s to, to analyze what would happen. But you can see here that when times are good, you know, Bitcoin does well. When the S&P 500 is, is doing well, Bitcoin does well. And, and again, Bitcoin has existed during a Fed tightening cycle. Um, so, you know, let's let's look at it right here in, you know, 20, 2018 through 2019. You can see here, you know, we we were paused and during this pause, Historically, again, Bitcoin is coming out of a big gully, right? Just like stocks were, but Bitcoin rallied, stocks rallied, you know, and then both dipped together while they were cutting interest rates. So again, we are not expecting at this point, the market is not forecasting any cuts until September, you know, five, six, seven months out, give or take. Um, so again, unless presented with new information, um, a lot of this is just local volatility. Okay, so I wanted to just address that. I know you're probably seeing stuff on Twitter about, you know, inflation's back and like markets are doomed. And, you know, in the short term, there can be, you know, there can be volatility. But again, we we remain data dependent. We use the tools at our disposal to make decisions. And um, it's it would be very atypical for the markets to start aggressively correcting, you know, and the Fed to just not, you know, be cutting interest rate. It would It would be kind of like the market front running fed you know anticipation of fed's decisions by six months and and typically it's it's not again just looking at the data that's typically not what we see right they line up a lot closer you know like going back we can remove bitcoin here again like look at this right here we are paused you know we are we are paused markets continue to rally we do get some shakeouts in between um you know and then when the fed starts cutting interest rates we start drawing down again right here markets you know interest rates are relatively flat you know holding strong they begin to cut interest rates and then look at what happens at the market and the reason for that is you start to see something like unemployment right we'll add unemployment to the to the mix now okay so here's the unemployment rate just a real quick example the reason they start cutting right is because you can see unemployment starts to creep up so people start losing their jobs and then they have to start cutting interest rates to you know and it's, it's a lagging effect you know to to ease to ease the uh the economy you know and, and to relieve pressure on on financial markets so anyways that's it just, just a quick little crash course we went a little bit over but i wanted to give a little bit of context as to potentially what you're seeing this morning I know we probably could have gone a lot more in depth. Um, I wanted to keep it kind of surface level. But guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please like it, subscribe, and check out the first link in the description below where you can sign up for our premium Discord. We do two hours a day of private live voice calls. You get to see all of my active positions, how I'm navigating the markets, as well as the rest of the Because Bitcoin team. Um, in the next month and a half, you're also going to get included in that membership, the BB Terminal, which is basically a Bloomberg terminal, but for crypto guys, you get portfolio tracking, derivatives data, high time frame indicators, literally everything you need to succeed in financial markets all conveniently packaged into one super website again included in that discord membership in the next month and a half second link below is the bb academy we just dropped it if you want to learn to do ta and chart and approach markets like myself and the rest of the because bitcoin team check that out before prices go up again that's the second link in the description below 
it's beginner, intermediate, and advanced friendly the further you get into the course. Again, it's $199.99, really great value for you know under $200. And again, guys, prices are going up soon. We just launched the BB Academy. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Take care.